All right, everybody. Hey, it's Wednesday morning. We're still on Eastern Time. It's about 9:20. We're in Indiana, about maybe 20 or 25 miles southwest of Indianapolis. I stopped last night, camped out in uh, South Bend, Indiana. There's a little pilot there that I was trying to get to. It's a small one. When I got there, the only spots that were open were reservable. So I parked in one and went on to the app to try to reserve one and uh, they were all already reserved. So I went across the road and found a little, like a speedway or something like that that had a couple of spots left. So I got got in there. It worked out all right, although I was wanting to get a shower. I didn't. But there was a little Mexican restaurant right behind where I parked, so I walked over and got me some nice hot food. Because uh, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but my refrigerator has gone out on me. It's been weird for a couple of weeks. I had it checked out over the weekend when I had my truck over at MHC. And they said it was shot. I mean, you know, I'd say about 80% of the time, it doesn't cool at all. But every now and then when I check it, got a little bit of cooling going on but just a little bit not enough to really keep food in there the freezer does not freeze oh anyway I've got another refrigerator ordered it's supposed to be delivered tomorrow I don't know if I've talked about this or not yet I'll I'll cover that a little more maybe do a whole separate video Anyway, I haven't been able to bring, I threw out most of the food I brought last week because after the fridge had not cooled for like three days, I was just afraid to eat something. So this week, I mean, I've got my snack box and stuff, things I can microwave, but uh, I haven't had my normal food bringings and having to get food at the truck stops and whatnot most of the time so that was pretty cool having a nice mexican meal so anyway we've got this load of zorba we picked up yesterday afternoon that delivers to henderson kentucky still about two and a half hours away we'll be flipping back over to central time though to get this delivered don't know what's next giving you a little road footage this is some of the few hilly spots in indiana that i've seen <laughs> Indiana's usually is pretty flat. Oh yeah, I should mention. You know, I left out this morning. Uh, probably hit the road about 4.20. You know, after I did my inspection and all, hit the road 4.20 or 4.30. As I got, I think I was heading south on Highway 31, but there was a backup there. I don't know what happened. I think maybe a semi truck had turned over, but anyway, they had the road blocked, diverting all the traffic off the highway. So we go, go about a mile off the highway and then take a left onto a 
smaller, just a rural road that would take us a two or three miles around and then back out to Highway 31. But it was marked for no trucks. So then, <laughs> and the reason for that was it had a, a high railroad crossing. Most of us made it okay but there was a hopper truck or a truck pulling a hopper trailer that uh, I don't know he was he was about two or three hundred yards up ahead of me I couldn't exactly see what was going on but he did not want to go over the railroad track once he got up there so he ended up you know, it probably took him half an hour to get back around and headed back out of this little road so that the traffic could move forward. So yeah, had some had some slow traffic. And then, you know, the regular slow traffic getting around uh, Indianapolis, you know, at 8 in the morning. So yeah kind of slowed me down. Anyway, that's enough. Let me get this phone call. Okay, everybody. Hey, a little update for you. I'm still about an hour and 40 minutes out from my customer in Henderson, Kentucky. Still in Indiana. We're on uh, 69 South, I guess you would say now. But I uh, just got a call from... Uh, Actually, when the phone rang earlier, that was Robert, you know, the guy who trained me. I've talked about him many times. He's just coming back out to work today from being off about a week and a half. He went on a cruise, he and his wife, so he was just telling me he's picking up a load late this afternoon in Little Rock and delivers it Friday in uh, Boston. That's kind of different. I hadn't talked to him much lately, so. Uh, and then after that, uh, my dispatcher Joey called. Wanted to see, uh, you know, check with me about a, a load he was wanting to book me on. And uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. So I'm going to deliver down here in Henderson, Kentucky. After that, he's gonna. Uh, I'll drive empty up to Davenport, Iowa. So that's a pretty, pretty long empty run. I think he said it was 400 and something miles. I can pick it up tomorrow morning, and then it delivers Monday in Houston. So once I pick it up in Davenport, I'll just go home, get home Friday. Little Rock, and then I'll leave out Sunday sometime and uh, head toward Houston. So that'll that'll make for a strong week there, because I'll be able to deliver that Monday, send in my paperwork, and it'll be on this week's check. So that'll be a strong week. Anyway, that's what's going on. I was going to mention too, yesterday, when I was kind of bogged down in traffic, I think I was, uh, we were trying to get through Toledo, Ohio. There's a lot of road construction and there was a broken down semi truck blocking a couple of lanes. So, you know, there was about probably 45 minutes or so where we were just not moving much so there was a lot of CB chatter going on and there was this young fella I'm not going to say who he was driving for but it was one of the mega carriers you know he's doing a drive-in said he'd been with them about eight months but man he's hating on him but, you know, he's just trying to get his experience so he can move on to something else. He's a, a military veteran, so he said he was able to get his uh, CDL schooling paid for. He didn't say if it was by the 
trucking company he's with or some other means but so we got a cdl he um, he's been driving for them about eight months but he's out on the road all the time i mean he said he stays out you know like two or three months at a time and then you know goes home for three or four days like man so of course lots of guys jumped in and had advice for him but you know right now he's just trying to pay his dues get his experience so we can move on and get something better I said, well, man, if uh, if you get get your two years experience, and if you feel like buying your own truck, take a look at Oakley, because <laughs> he lives in Louisiana. And I'm like, man, Louisiana, and he actually mentioned that uh, Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, kind of that region is what he'd like to run. So I'm like. Get home every weekend with Oakley. So anyway, that's that's the kind of conversation sometimes you find yourself in, especially when traffic is stopped and you know people aren't moving out of range on you while you're talking to them. Anyway, gonna be some nice weather today. It's already 61 degrees. Very nice. What it'll be like down in Houston. Usually it's a lot different down in Houston. I used to go to Houston quite a bit, driving for Maverick. Then there was a place over by uh, Vidor. I think that's how you pronounce that. Vidor. Vidor. I think maybe they call it Vidor. Anyway, there was a place down there we picked up uh, coiled rods or slinkies a lot. So I'm kind of familiar with that trip. Alright, see you in Henderson. Alright, folks. We're just a few miles from my delivery customer in Henderson, Kentucky. We're crossing the bridge here from Indiana into Kentucky. Had a way station about a half a mile back there that got pulled into, but bypassed around because, hey, this is a light load, really. I forget what it was. I had several thousand pounds to spare, though, because really the trailer filled up before, you know, got to a critical weight and the shipper was happy with it so uh, there we go so now we're in Kentuck I vaguely remember coming to this place you know I, I don't know if I mentioned it or not but I came here first week out when I was uh, trailing Robert, we had picked up a load of Zorb up in West Virginia and brought it down here. It was in the early evening when we delivered. It was already dark, as I remember. So, this is better. But I'll try to show you some when I get there. Okay, guys. So, I've uh, come in the entry gate and got instructions I'll be dumping this load back in there, but I have to drive all the way around the building. I vaguely remember this. Like I said, it was dark when I was here before, but... Um, here's the scale. I've got to get on this scale and check in and then uh, get instructions about what to do. But as I remember, we uh, have to drive all the way back around to the right. I'll try to show you some of that once we get over there. 
Okay, so I got checked in there, pulled off the scale. I'll try to show you some of this. The battery's about to go dead, but we'll see what happens. This place is called Audubon Metals. And like I said, we just gotta drive all the way around the building. And then uh, there'll be a stoplight up here, or a stop sign up here. I'll get out and untarp and kind of get my mud flaps off, you know, kind of get ready. Get a hard hat, safety shirt, all that. And then, as I remember, there's a, they got a traffic light up there. And when it turns green, you can pull on through to the unloading area. Hey, at least it's concrete. That's a bonus. Okay, so we got some workers up here. Uh, well, I guess I'm gonna need to let them get out of the way. All right, more later. Okay, so pulling through, got around those work fellas, put in a new battery. And as you can see, like I mentioned, there's a, uh, a traffic light here it's red now so I'm gonna pull up here get some uh, safety gear on get out and take my tarp off my mud flaps and uh, wait for that to turn green okay got my tarp rolled off got my hard hat safety shirt boots and now the light is green See if we can get in here and get unloaded. Come on, dude. Oh, now the light is red. Probably because that front end loader went in there. Let's see if it comes back on. Well, I'll pick this up uh, in a minute. All right, now it's green again. Just give it a shot. They got some large piles of Zorba in here, as you can see. So what I remember last time is I came in here and made a sharp turn to the left. As you can see, it's pretty tight. Well, I'll show you in a minute. Make sure I can make the turn here. All right, so I think what we do is make a right turn here and then back up and we'll kind of dump uh, right here, kind of right in front of the truck, right in here. At least that's what we did before. Oh, there's a lady down there. Maybe she's gonna tell me. Let's go down and see what she wants. Let's 
She might have me dumping somewhere else. Alright, let me see what she wants. Alright folks, so she's got me backing up. Gonna kind of dump right there where you saw her standing. So that'll be easy. And then I'll go straight out of here and back towards the scale. She's back there kind of waving me. She's gonna tell me when to stop. I'll try to show you some of it when I when I'm done. All right, she gave me the stop. Get back to you. All right, guys, trailer's going up. Just trying to give you a look. Lots of zorba powder around here. Oh, there it goes. And as it dumps and makes a big pile, I'll just pull forward a little bit. I've got plenty of room here to raise the trailer. Pretty windy out here though, I'll tell you. Alright, let me pay attention. 